Fish Hunting Dinosaurs Let's talk today about fish hunting dinosaurs. The Mesozoic seas were dominated by marine reptiles, such as the ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, and mosasaurs. The shores and rivers were also full of different species of fish, crocodiles, and turtles, whose relatives are still alive today. So what makes the scientists think that there were dinosaurs that could possibly hunt on fish? Firstly, they looked at and compared some of the dinosaurs and the aquatic animals and those living by the water. For example, they found that they have similarly long and narrow jaws and nostrils near the eyes like those of crocodiles, suggesting a fish-based diet. Although the majority of dinosaur corpses were found on dry land, some teeth were found in areas that would have historically been floodplains, riverbeds, and lake shorelines. Some theropod dinosaurs, such as Baryonyx, have been found with the remains of Lepidotes fish in their stomach. Therefore, it is thought that members of the family Spinosauridae were adapted to a piscivarious diet, meaning that they were fish eaters. Baryonyx Baryonyx walkeri was a large theropod and the biggest meat eater found in Europe from the Barremian stage of the early Cretaceous period. It was initially discovered by the amateur fossil collector William Walker, who found a huge fossil claw bone in a clay pit in southern England of the UK, exactly in Smokejack's Pit near Ockley in Surrey in January 1983. Walker realized that the claw was broken and returned to the same place. He also found a few other bones, and all was taken to the Natural History Museum in London. Alan Kegg and Angela Milner examined the bones and came to the conclusion that the remains belonged to a large theropod. The team that went to the pit in 1983 excavated two tons of rock containing the almost complete remains, which happened to be the first spinosaurid skeleton. Some individual bones were found in the past. However, this time the rocks included parts of the skull. When comparing a baryonic skull with one of a modern crocodile, they both look astonishingly similar. Both have distinctive narrow jaws and small semi-conical teeth. Alongside the fish remains, some of Iguanodon bones were found inside of the Baryonyx's ribcage. It was noted that these spinosaur teeth were straighter than those of other meat-eating dinosaurs, and the ones at the tip were longer. A Baryonyx skeleton that was found in southern England was 10 meters or 33 feet long, and apparently it wasn't even a fully grown individual when it died. The species' forelimbs are very strong, and equipped with heavy claws. But what do we know so far about how Baryonyx hunted its prey? In truth, it is debated. There are different claims made by scientists, from using its forelimbs like those of grizzly bears when catching salmon and fish from the water, acting like a scavenger, and opening carcasses with a long snout and large claws. It is possible that this dinosaur seized fish similarly to modern crocodiles. If standing on a riverbank, Baryonyx might have stretched out its long, straight neck to grab unsuspecting fish in its jaws. The sharp and slender teeth design could have helped them with stabbing and holding tightly the scaly, struggling prey. It probably swallowed the fish whole, but if the catch was too big, then the strong claws could be used in order to break it up into smaller chunks. Apart from iguanodons, Baryonyx likely chased and used its claws to prey on small to medium terrestrial animals. Baryonyx could have been found in a habitat which included the shorelines and floodplains. It shared the land with sauropods like Eucomeratos and Thyreophorans, such as Palocanthus. Neo Venator also lived there, but hunted on larger terrestrial animals.
Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus is believed to be one of the largest, if not the largest, hunting dinosaur ever found in Europe. It was as long as 60 feet, which is over 18 meters. Its length could be compared to that of the Tyrannosaurus, but had a lighter build. The weight is estimated at around 12 to 20,000 kilograms, or 12 to 20 tons, although some researchers have estimated it as low as 6 to 9 tons. Spinosaurus had a long, narrow skull, about 1.7 meters or 6 feet long. The snout was extended and narrow, with nostrils on its back. The massive jaw was lined with 64 conical sharp teeth that are similar to the modern crocodiles. Its head and neck were adapted for a strong downward strike. Spinosaurus had broad paddle-like webbed feet and it had shortened back legs. It was recorded that Spinosaurus had a relatively small number of tail muscles, even less than a crocodile. The skeleton proportions and the tail suggest that it may have been used for propulsion in water. There is evidence that Spinosaurus lived in an environment of a mangrove swamp-like habitat. Although Spinosaurus was classified as a carnivore, fish was its main diet. It is believed that the species it preyed on included giant coleocans, sawfish, large lungfish, or even sharks. With each newly discovered skeleton, scientists have more knowledge about its hunting methods. They are still arguing whether Spinosaurus could really live and breathe in water. With such a body build, Spinosaurus could have some difficulties in chasing prey in the deepest waters. Therefore, some scientists suggest that the Spinosaurus hunted fish in shallow waters and could paddle like a heron and dip down to ambush fish below. It is believed that Spinosaurus was better equipped for hunting underwater than any other known dinosaur. A study on bone density was conducted to assess the life history and lifestyle of different animals. Researchers checked a wide variety of reptiles, mammals, and birds. The study was instigated after the discovery of a Moroccan Spinosaurus, which showed adaptions to swimming. Most dinosaurs were found to live on land, with only some exceptions. It is known that Spinosaurus had links to water, whereas its relative, Suchomimus, had stronger links to land. The result of the study of living animals were compared to the bones of dinosaurs. Based on family groups built between different dinosaurs, the researchers behind the report suggest that underwater hunting could be common to all Spinosaurs, with Suchomimus having later lost the ability to do so. It is believed that these dinosaurs would probably not have been able to swim in the sea. Spinosaurus and Baryonyx would have probably spent a lot of time around water like lakes, swamps and rivers to hunt. Also, reproduction would be more suitable on land as it was where the dinosaurs laid their hard-shelled eggs. The dense bones may have allowed them to stand in deeper water and hunt prey without diving. Although the density of the bones, together with its paddle-like feet and tail, assured some scientists to claim that Spinosaurus didn't just spend much of its time in the water, but could actually swim in order to hunt its prey. However, the debate is still open, as some think that the studies, although interesting, do not solve the problems of the dinosaur's capability of submerging into water. Suchomimus Suchomimus lived in East Africa, a little later than Baryonyx lived in Europe, in the Apician stage of the early Cretaceous. The specimen was uncovered in 1997 in the Teneri Desert in the south-central Sahara region of Niger. It was about 11 meters or 36 feet long and apparently not yet fully grown. Having such large size allowed this dinosaur to go into two meters or six and a half feet deep water. And Sukumimus liked chasing fish. But it is believed that meat was also on its diet too. 
The East Africa beds in which its remains were found contained very few meat-eating dinosaurs. Therefore, Sukumimus was probably the main hunter of the area as well. Scientists examined the bones and were surprised at how similar it looked to Baryonyx. Both dinosaurs had similar characteristics in the form of a long narrow snout with a paddle-shaped tip and sharp little interlocking teeth, probably to grip slippery fish. Its nostrils lay far back on its head and it is assumed that it would help to breathe while feeding underwater. Sukumimus may have used its powerful forelimbs and thumb claws to catch a meter or three feet long fish from the water or to pull apart the carcasses of big meaty animals or dinosaurs. The only difference between Sukumimus and Baryonyx is the ridged back and the tail spines along the backbone, which would have supported a low fin in life. Some scientists think that Sukumimus was actually a large Baryonyx. They conducted some studies of Baryonyx and suspected that its back could have also supported a fin. Researchers also suggested that Sukumimus is really a new species of Baryonyx. Sukumimus was named by Sereno, Beck, Duthiel, Gardo, Larson, Lyon, Marcotte, Rahut, Sadlier, Sidor, Vericio, and G. P. Wilson and J. A. Wilson in 1998. The name meaning is Crocodile Mimic. Leoningosaurus We are now virtually traveling to a different part of the world, exactly to the Liaoning province in northeastern China, where about 20 Liaoningosaurus specimens were collected from a place close to Xiofutang Formation and four different places in the Yixian Formation. It is thought that this dinosaur lived in the Aptian stage of the Cretaceous period. The first Leonangosaurus specimens was described by Zhu Jing, Wang Xiaolin, and Yu Haolu in 2001. The name meaning is Liaoning Lizard. The animal was placed in the order of Ornithischian dinosaurs. It was a very small ankylosaur which had a turtle-like look. The skeleton was only about 34 centimeters or only 13 inches long. Although it was originally believed that the specimen belonged to a juvenile and that adults could have been much larger. Scientists found two large plates of bone covering nearly the whole belly. They also discovered a few elements of bony armor on the back. Usually, most ankylosaurs have extensive covering of osteoderms. The bony cores of spikes, plates, and scale-like scutes that grow within the skin along their backs and sides. Scientists believe that the overall small size of the specimen and the lack of fusion between parts of the vertebrae belonged to an indeterminate juvenile. However, the second species of Liaoningosaurus was described in 2006, also from the Lower Cretaceous, and was a small specimen too. It also lacked fusion with vertebra or the sacrum, and dorsal scutes. More importantly, the specimen itself was evidence of what was suspected that Leoningosaurus ate fish. As incomplete portions of fish skeletons were preserved within its rib cage, it was excluded that the ankylosaur died on top of the fish carcass and it ended up within the rib cage. In addition, a theory that the fish died within the skeleton while scavenging was also rejected due to lack of any evidence that such a thing had happened. The two structure is alike to Ankylosaurus, being roughly triangular or leaf-shaped and having many individual points known as denticles. However, Leoningosaurus's teeth have the gaps between the denticles extended almost all the way to the base of the tooth. It makes it look something like a comb or a fork with six or seven sharp tines. The researchers think that the two system can penetrate small animals like fish and therefore was adapted toward a carnivorous lifestyle. So far, 
Only two specimens of Lianingosaurus have been described in the technical literature. However, as many as hundreds of specimens have been collected from the Yixian formation. What makes it even more interesting is the size of all the specimens which were found to be under 50 centimeters or 20 inches in length. They also appear to lack vertebral or sacral fusion, but have belly-covered osteoderms. Scientists reconsidered the fact that the small size and lack of fusion which would normally signify the juvenile specimens are in fact adults. The lack of fusion in major regions of the skeleton suggests the animal was semi-aquatic. The sharp claws and large fork-shaped teeth of this dinosaur might be a lifestyle adaption for catching and eating not just fish, but other small animals. The abdominal deck could protect the belly of the body from underwater attacks. It is unknown how deep the animal could swim in water. Further research is needed to prove that Liangosaurus was indeed feeding on fish and that it was a tiny semi-aquatic turtle mimic. This is the first and so far only known example of a possibly carnivorous or omnivorous ornithischian, a representative of the large group including ankylosaurs, stegosaurs, pachycephalosaurs, ceratopsians and ornithopods. Keratosaurus Keratosaurus was a large theropod with an estimated length of about 6 meters or just under 20 feet. It had an impressive body with a weight of 970 kilograms or nearly a ton. This dinosaur lived in the late Jurassic around 153 to 148 million years ago. Its remains were found in Portugal and in the USA in the Morrison Formation of Wyoming. Keratosaurus means horned lizard. The dinosaur was given this name because it had a row of sharp horns on its head and a row of small bony pieces of armor running along its back. It is unknown what this body armor was used for, but it could have been for protection from attack by either another Keratosaurus or larger theropods, such as Allosaurus and Torvosaurus. This dinosaur was a rare animal. Although it lived alongside Allosaurus, its remains are much rarer to find. Keratosaurus belonged to a group of the biggest hunters in the Jurassic period. It is believed that its prey probably included plant-eating dinosaurs. There were a lot of competitors fighting for food on dry land, Therefore, it made sense that a lighter dinosaur like Keratosaurus found different ways and habitats to hunt for prey. Some scientists have suggested that it is possible that this dinosaur was a swamp-dwelling animal chasing on aquatic animals such as fish, turtles and crocodiles. Keratosaurus is known for its very long slender teeth in its upper jaw. These teeth could be over 9 centimeters or three and a half inches long, which is nearly as long as the lower jaw was deep. Despite that nobody really knows why the teeth were so long, it is assumed that their size helped causing deep, ripping wounds in prey. It is considered that all life originally came from the water. Most groups of terrestrial vertebrates have representatives that have reinvaded the seas. For example, mammals are mainly land dwellers, but have whales and seals that adapted to life in the ocean. Also, some other mammals like otters, tapirs, and hippos are semi-aquatic. However, why the dinosaurs did not have members that lived in the water is still a mystery. A study based on the bone density and body similarities to other aquatic predators, plus remains of fish found in bellies, suggest that some spinosaurids had a semi-aquatic lifestyle. The debate continues whether spinosaurids actually swam for their food, 
or if they just stood in the shallows and dipped their heads in to snap up prey. With more specimens being found every decade and more research completed, it will hopefully provide more insight to the life of the fish-hunting dinosaurs and hopefully to give more evidence of their ability to swim in the water. These videos take a very long time to create. If you would like to support the channel and assist in improving it, then do please subscribe and give us a like, and consider joining our Patreon. Links in the description.